celebrating 10 years of possibility. Pilot Flying J and Halloran Hilton Hill present Anything is Possible. Today's guest, Alvin Nance. Welcome to another edition of Anything is Possible. I'm Halloran Hilton Hill, and of course, these are great stories about great people who prove with their lives that anything is possible. Today, my guest is the CEO of KCDC, my good friend Alvin Nance. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you, Hal. I'm glad to be here, man. This is a long time coming. <laughs> yes, and I, I'm glad you're here. So I'm going to say the name of a city, and I want you to say the first thing that comes to your mind. Uh -huh. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hometown. <laughs> Hometown. What was it like growing up in uh, Chattanooga? Oh, uh, Ch Chattanooga was a great town. I, uh, you know, even though uh, I grew up as a kid and uh, not experienced Chattanooga as it is today, it still was a great community. I remember growing up in, in Chattanooga, and uh, we had a lot of steel mills that were operating in Chattanooga. And uh, I, I can remember they talking about the worst smog in the country was in Chattanooga. Because uh, all that steel, all that steel man. mill. So we knew we were making a lot of money there in Chattanooga. But how many people in your family? There's actually six kids in my family. Uh, I'm the oldest uh, of six kids. Uh, my mom and dad are deceased now, but uh, we, we, we all live there in Chattanooga. My mom and dad from uh, outside of Huntsville, Alabama. I always tell people Huntsville, Alabama, because I tell them where they're from. They'll look at me and go, <laughs> where? <laughs> you, you know, it's interesting. Um, my father uh, was from Chattanooga, Tennessee. His family actually was from Scottsboro, Alabama, which no, is where between it is. Chattanooga you know exactly where and it is. Huntsville. Exactly. It's right along that. Exactly. Down 72. Mm, <laughs> no, no, we might. <laughs> so, what, so what were you like as a kid? You, you know, I, as a kid, I was an interesting kid because I was the oldest in, in my family. And, uh, and my dad uh, felt strongly about the fact that, that you had to have chores. There, there are things that, that you, you were supposed to do. Uh, so what were some of your chores? Uh, I was responsible for uh, cooking. Uh, I was also responsible for uh, getting wood in at night in the wintertime. So Did you that, say uh, cooking? Cooking, yes, sir. Uh, I, I can cook. <laughs> <laughs> I can cook. I, 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 can cook. I, I can comb hair. Uh, I can just comb my sister's hair. I mean, they didn't like what it looked like when I got done, but I could do it. <laughs> so, so you would have to bring wood in because that's the way you heated the house that you lived in? That's the way we heated the house we lived in. Uh, growing up as a kid, uh, my mom and dad never purchased a home until probably my second or third year of college at that point. We'd always lived in rental houses. Um, you know, not the best of rental houses, but you know, my dad was a proud man. He he believed strongly in providing for his family. Uh, he did not want my mother to work until actually all of the kids were in school. Wow! Uh, so he held down two and three jobs at a time. Uh, what was it like was watching it? him do that? Because you're the oldest. He wanted you to to kick into the work gear early, yes. but and and I, if your dad was anything like my dad, they didn't talk much. No, they just did. They did. Right, they did. So like, watching him, what did you pick up from him? Well, Chattanooga was a tough town to grow Chattanooga up in. Chattanooga was a tough town. It was to a tough town. Yeah, 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 yeah. You had to be able to take care of yourself uh, to, to grow up in that community. Well, I think what been watching my dad and observe my dad was uh, his work ethic. I mean, uh, it didn't matter what job he did. I mean, uh, he worked at the U.S. Pipe Steel Mill. Uh, he worked in the uh, the smelting area where it was the hottest part of the uh, foundry to be in. But uh, we're talking about an individual that uh, <clears throat> would go into work uh, at, uh, on, a, on a night shift, get off that morning and, 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 and go to uh, uh, an asphalt job that he was on. And then may uh, hit a, a janitorial job and go home and sleep for two or three hours. Uh, and go do then, it again. Then, then go do it again. Uh, as a kid, when I was when I was when I was initially growing up, because I was trying to play sports, and then you know I would see other kids' parents, you know, would be at school. My mom was always there for us at school, whatever the events we were doing. But my dad never was, and and, and you know, as a kid growing up, I always thought, well, you know, you know, dad can't come. I wish dad could come and stuff. After I got in college, uh, and I went to Maryville College, uh, my dad had never saw me play sports in, in the entire times that I had played in high school and stuff. And uh, but once I went off to college. He never missed a home game, man. He stood on that sideline and uh, was always there. And, and as I grew older, I think the thing that I learned more so than anything else, Hal, is that uh, he taught me the fact of, you, you know, you take care of your business, you take care of your family, and you have pride in whatever job you do. It doesn't matter if, if you're out laboring and putting down asphalt that day. My dad was concerned about it being done right. 
Mm. It had to be done right. You, you don't do it uh, 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 halfway. You, you don't leave it incomplete. Uh, but his his thoughts were always were that if he was going to take on a job, it was going to be done right. And, and and people always thanked him for the job he done. And, and, and I walked away with that feeling uh, that, you know, no matter what I'm going to do in my life, I'm going to do it right. I'm amazed at the consistency of this one element in creating possibility, and that is work ethic. <laughs> It's like every single person, no matter what they've achieved at, and I don't define success financially, I define it by you decided or were called to do something and you figure out how to do it. Yes. Okay, so, so that's, what, that's what your success is. Every single person, though, has to work at it and they make an agreement with themselves about work that is a defining agreement. 100% mm -hmm. of the people that I've talked to have embraced that notion that it's gonna take some work. That's right. And I'm okay with that. Exactly. Have you found, did you find that as you were playing sports and then as you started to grow as a businessman, that that was something that kind of separated you from the pack, that that decision, I'm willing to do the work, was a defining decision? I, I think I learned I was willing to do the work, I think, at a, at a young age. I, I, I think the, the task and, and things that my parents asked me to do and, and watching my kids or being responsible for my brothers and sisters and things of this nature or taking on the responsibilities uh, around the house, I, I think I kind of understood that work ethic there uh, early on. Now, later in life, I think my dad helped me uh, crystallize that. Uh, as I mentioned to you that uh, he, he had several jobs and I can remember one summer I thought came from college. Uh, he he got me a, the summer job at the asphalt company he was working at that put down driveways. All right, all right. So you hold, <laughs> hold on right there because I want to I want to save that sir because I know this is this has got to be one of those defining stories. It is <laughs> asphalt and summer. Okay, <laughs> not a good not if you want to stay cool. That's right. <laughs> um, we'll hear the rest of that story coming up. My my guest is Alvin Nance, and you're watching Anything Is Possible. We'll be right back. Possibility powered by. Pilot Flying J, Covenant Health, Home Federal, and the Knoxville News Sentinel. Coming up. My mom and dad didn't really understand what college was all about, but they, they knew that if I could get a college degree, my life could be better. Alvin Nance is my guest this week on Anything Is Possible. We left off asphalt summer <laughs> crystallizing <laughs> of the concept of work ethic Ethics. your dad. <laughs> so your dad got uh, you a job with asphalt. Well, and, and it was a small asphalting company um, that did a lot of driveways. Um, but that summer they, they got a commercial job uh, at a red food store, which is similar to a Kroger's uh, warehouse. And uh, we had to put down 500 tons of asphalt. And when you're putting down asphalt in a, in a parking lot, uh, there are no trees on the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> no shade. There's no shade on the parking lot. And uh, you, you, you go out there, and, and, and at the end of the day, you look down at your boots, and, and, and the soles of your boots have melted. And, and, and you've got not much sole left. And, um, and so I worked that summer, and um, my dad had said to me, uh, he said, listen, if college doesn't work out and, and, and you want to come back home, and uh, I've talked to Mike, Mike was the owner of the company, and he said, you, you're more than welcome to, to, to work here at the asphalt company. And, uh, and I can tell you that uh, <laughs> when I left that, to go back that fall, uh, my football coach wanted to know what happened to me over the summer <laughs> because I didn't complain about how hot it was. You were hitting Do we have to run? Ever? Let's run. <laughs> yes, sir. I want to run today. <laughs> You know, I felt that that's... So what, hard work made you want to work hard. Hard, that's right. Yeah. And I, 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 some different things. And, and, and really... So you were an athlete. You were an athlete in high school. Mm -hmm. You are an athlete in college. Mm -hmm. Did you have your eye on becoming a pro athlete? And I think every kid uh, growing up have that desire and that dream to go on and play professional uh, sports, whether it's football, baseball, or basketball, whatever it may be. Um, when, when, when I was growing up, I, I think the thought was is that, you know, I was going to either play at the University of Tennessee or Alabama, 
or Michigan or Notre Dame. Those are four teams you could always see on the television right. back for uh, pre-cable days. And and and, and so when, when the opportunity for to going to Maryville College uh, presented itself, I really hadn't decided that, that I was ready for Maryville College. Uh, again, I, I go back and thank my dad for, for, for my, both my mom and dad, um, because my sophomore year, well, let me qualify that, that would be my freshman year because uh, we didn't do middle school. We did junior high school. Right. So <laughs> you, when you went to high school, you was in the 10th grade. Um, but after my mom uh, got all our kids, all our kids in school, she actually started to work for the Chattanooga school system when the Chattanooga school system first started the Head Start program. All right. So here she is raising six kids. She's going to go to, and, and, and go to school and work with more kids. Uh, and she did. Couple, maybe a year into that, the next year, when it was my junior year, uh, they, they decided to make it part of the school system. And you had to have a high school diploma. My mom never graduated from high school, nor my dad. Uh, and and my mom decided she was going to work on her GED. And, 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 and really that was something that, that kind of helped me focus a little bit more about going to college because my mom and dad didn't really understand what college was all about, but they, they knew that if I could get a college degree, my life could be better. Wow. It could be different. And they if, just knew that. And if you saw your mother placing that much value on education, that meant you had to do it. I had that. to do it. I had to do it. I mean, I, I spent time helping her study. Uh, and, and I really started to think more about college at well, that I mean, time. Well, well, let's not speed past that. What was that like helping your mother study? Well, the first thing was is that I was thinking that she really grasped me for straws. <laughs> but really? Asking me because I, I was a good student. I was a good student in school. I was always on the road in that respect. But I never tried to sit down and help anyone else. And then on top of that, it being your mother. And I did you know. feel, did that feel awkward to it you? It felt awkward for me. It, it, it did. And then and, and after a while, she kind of worked me through it. My mom kind of worked me through it because, um, you, you know, she, my mom had a great sense of humor, uh, as well as my dad, even though he didn't speak a whole lot. They, 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 they loved to laugh. Uh, and, and then my mom finally worked it around to where, uh, you know, she would always talk about, well, here's my teacher coming, you know. I, I guess I'm in trouble again today. I, I guess I'm going to have to stay after school. And so it got to be more of a, a fun type of thing. That's that an respect. amazing story, though, uh, Alvin. That's an amazing story. But once That's, she did that, that changed my whole perspective about because while she was working there, she met a young girl who had graduated from Maribel College. And I remember her coming home and, and she was just so amazed about how this young girl was in charge of all of these students in the school, and she was the teacher, and and, and had gone to college, and, and 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 so I think that's really when my mom and dad began to really sense that hey, you, you know, a college education would be a good thing. They knew they couldn't afford it, but they 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 really was hopeful that there was a way that I could uh, go to college. Uh, and being yeah. the oldest of six kids, that that's challenging when you know there's five kids still at home. My dad was the oldest of seven. Mm -hmm. Comes out of Chattanooga. And uh, when we come back, I'm going to tell you something that he to that his brother told me about him. And I want to know if it connects with something in your family. My guest is Alvin Nance. You're watching Anything is Possible. I really think that's a unique, that's one of the most unique stories I've ever heard, that you were helping your mother finish yeah. high school while you were making the decision to go to college. college. That's big. We'll be back with more. Coming up. Hey, I'm, I'm in college for a lot of folks. It's not just for Alan. I'm in college for a lot of folks. And, and, and at that point, I, I, I just really feared failing at that point. Alvin Nance is my guest on this week's edition of Anything Is Possible. You can watch it online. Here on the screen, you can see where you can watch it. Um, so let me tell you what happened at my dad's funeral. So I go to my dad's funeral, and he was the oldest of seven. Mm -hmm. Um... The brother that was right after him had passed away years ago. The next brother, my Uncle Billy, was sitting there and he was holding court. And so my Uncle Billy is there and my Uncle Eddie is there and um, cousins and nephews. And we're all sitting around and we're asking about my dad, who was the oldest of seven, mm -hmm. first to go to college. And my Uncle Billy said, your father, who they called June, said he was the first one to go to college. And when we saw him do it, that's what we all wanted to do. 
And we didn't realize that him going on and doing well in his life was what was giving us permission to try. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why your parents were pushing you so hard because you're the first domino in that chain. Okay, so if Alvin goes on, if he latches on to yes. it, and he's been combing his sister's hair, and he's been <laughs> cooking, and there's this emotional connection Action. with his brothers and sisters, he's really making a down payment on. Does that? Does that? That's that's accurate. Because you know, the, 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 you know, out of the six, you know, three of us did go to college. Uh, you know, the others are doing well. Uh, they they found employment. They're they're taking care of themselves. Uh, but I think that they ended up uh, more. Uh, independent because of my going to college That's and because amazing. of hearing some of those things that, that I experienced in college that I could come back and share. But, but you know, one of the things, Hale, that, that, that really stood out to me was is that when I first went off to college that, that, that first year, for, for, for me, my, my world was a fairly small world. I mean, growing up in Chattanooga, I mean, if we went to visit somewhere, we went to visit family in Alabama. So, right. so, so when, when, I left to come to Maryville College, which today is no more than an hour and 15 minute drive from Chattanooga. I thought I'd gone to California. I was a world away from where I was. And, and that first year was, was a little challenging for me. And, and I wasn't quite certain, you, you know, it, and I can remember going home that, that first summer. And, 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 and when I went to church with my mom, uh, all of the ladies and, and, and the older men in the church were saying, oh, well, this is the college boy. Yeah. They're... And they were so proud of They me were hanging being their hopes on, on you. On me. Yeah. And man, I, and at that point, then I began to realize that, well, you know, hey, I, I'm, I'm in college for a lot of folks. It's not just for Alvin. <laughs> I'm in college for a lot of folks. And, and, and at that point, I, I, I just really feared failing at that point. I went back that, 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 after that summer. I didn't even come back home the, the, the next three summers in a row. I found work. And, and you got after there it. And, and got busy. Tell me about KCDC. You're the CEO of KCDC. Which is, you went on to get your degree. And yeah. um, give me a, a sense of the size and scope of KCDC. Well, we're, we're a smaller organization now. When I initially went there uh, 10 years ago, we, we employed uh, a little over 300 people. Uh, our budget ranged anywhere between 35 million to 40 million. Uh, today, uh, our budget still ranges in the 35 to 40 million dollar range. Uh, we employ maybe 150 people today. Uh, we've expanded the scope of the services we provide to the city of Knoxville. We've taken over the uh, operations of the Knox County Housing Authority. Uh, so I think we've become a more efficient organization uh, through transition. Uh, we're providing a better product to the people who live in public housing, and I think we're doing a better job of delivering that service. You're a CEO, though. You're running a multi-million dollar enterprise. Uh, you've had a, a great career in banking, and I'm trying to dial back to all the stuff that you're doing that your mom and dad could only dream of. Oh, listen, I, 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 I think many a times about that, you know, uh, when, when I went to work for the bank, I was making more money than my dad had made, and he had been working 25 years at the steel mill. So my first check was more than he had ever made. Uh, and, and so that, that was pretty sobering to me because, you know, at that point in time, you know, I'm thinking that, you, you know, looking at my parents and what they were able to accomplish with what they had really helped me focus a little bit about, you know, how I was going to live my life. Uh, I, I always love for people to teach me before they leave. So I'd love for you to just take a minute and teach us what you've learned about success and possibility. Maybe tell us about your family as well. Oh, well, good. Well, listen, uh, let, let, let me talk about my family first. And uh, I'm married to a lovely lady, Jackie Nance. Uh, she was Jackie Rawls uh, when I met her on campus. Uh, she, I met her at Maryville College. Uh, uh, she, she, she was a freshman, and, and, and I was BMOC, big man on campus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you. <laughs> and, and so I swooned. That was you your, know? That was your, uh, your first move. sales job. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we met at Maryville College uh, uh, her freshman year, my senior year. Uh, the next year, uh, we got married. Uh, she uh, took an intern job at uh, TVA. Uh, her sophomore year, uh, that turned into a permanent job. Wow. Uh, and she's a 30-plus year employee at TVA today. I uh, continue to stay in that job. Uh, uh, two kids. Uh, my daughter uh, will turn 29 this October. Uh, she she uh, has produced our first grandchild. Uh, we, we, we got a little boy, little, girl. Little boy. Uh, What's his name? His name's Dallas Hendricks. 
Uh, I call him early. Right. I figure he's got to have a little baseball name. Or something. <laughs> you know, early Hendrix sounds pretty cool, you know. <laughs> so, so, so now I just got to work him into his sports thing. That, uh, but he's left-handed, so I've already decided he needs to play baseball gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> at that point. Uh, but uh, she's worked for a hospital. Uh, my son-in-law uh, owns a couple of uh, health clubs uh, there in Atlanta. Awesome. Um, my son is 24. Uh, he uh, was living in Lexington, went to the University of Kentucky to play football there, and after he finished, uh, he is now in grad school working on his MBA. Um, what have you learned about life and, and I, success? I, I think what I've learned about life and success from watching my mother and father was is that we didn't have a whole lot of money, but we had a whole lot of love, had a whole lot of family, had a whole lot of caring. Uh, what I've tried to, 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 to do, Hal, is, is not to substitute that with money. Uh, I, I've tried to make certain that those things stay of value to me, my family, uh, to my kids. Uh, I, I go back and look at the work ethic thing is that um, uh, I didn't have a whole lot when I grew up as a kid, so I, I, I don't try to act like I got a whole lot today. Uh, I remember my dad, uh, as I said, uh, he and my mom are, are interested. I, I can remember my dad telling me one time that, uh, that uh, he said, son, if you can see a man's money, he ain't got any. If he's driving it, if he's on his house or he's wearing it, he ain't got it. He says, so if you can see a man's money, he probably ain't got any. And so, so I've kind of took that to heart. And uh, so, so uh, uh, I try to not see a lot of my money. <laughs> I let the bank see more. <laughs> but, but, I, but I think from a success side is that the work ethics that both my mom and dad instilled in me as a young person is, is part of the reason why I think my success ha has been there. I, I, I never felt that I couldn't do something. Uh, because they never uh, put any restrictions on us as kids growing up. Yeah, we didn't have money, but we didn't have restrictions on going to school and being a good student. We always had to hope. Uh, had my mom always believed that we were going to be good students, that we were going to apply ourselves. And 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 and, and she she didn't beat on us to be good students. I, I just felt that that she I put wanted the bar to. of expectation there. And wow. I wanted to come home and, and show her that report card and, and and get that hug from her and, and her tell me how proud she is of her baby. Uh, that meant a lot. Wow. Uh, so I've carried that. <laughs> Inspirational story. Mm -hmm. And I, I thank you for coming by and sharing that with us. Uh, possibility is a great thing. And I'm, I'm learning through the years of doing this that we do so much for our kids by believing for them mm -hmm. that anything is possible. Alvin Nance, thanks for coming by. <laughs> no, man, I enjoyed it. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time.